Today we're going to look at which clan enslaved St. Patrick, possibly, or to be more accurate, who are the modern descendants of his captors. Patrick, or Patrick in Irish, has multiple origin stories and just as many different stories of when, why and how he ended up in Ireland. I will be following the most commonly known patrician legend. Whether this makes it true is another thing altogether, but if all myths and legends are just lies and fanciful stories, they do say the best lies are based on truth, and who doesn't love a good story? Patrick was a son from a wealthy family. His father was the Curian and Deacon. He was possibly born in sub-Roman Britain between the late 4th to 5th century. Multiple locations of his birth have been suggested, from Ravenglass in Cumbria to Carlisle to St David's in Wales. This period saw attacks by land and sea from raiders including the Picts, Scotti, a Latin word for Gaels and the mysterious Atacotti whose origins may lie in Ireland. According to Patrick's own account, it was the Irish raiders who brought him to Ireland, where he was enslaved and held captive for six years. An alternative interpretation of Patrick's departure to Ireland suggests that, as a son of a Jacurian, he would have been obliged by law to serve on the town council, but chose instead to abscond by fleeing abroad, as many others in his position had done in what has become known as the Flight of the Curials. Although as I stated, we'll stick to the other theory. Some sources state, while a slave, he tended sheep on slave mesh, now known as Slamish, his master being either a druid or a king called Milky MacBoyne of the Dalboyne, sometimes anglicised to Dalmunia. The Dalboyne were a medieval Irish petty kingdom that was part of the Dalaradia, part of the greater area known as Yulid. Mount Slamish is a modern day Antrim. Many clans claim descent from the Dalaradia within its boundaries. The Dalboyne will claim descent from Boyne son of Fergus, King of Ulster. After Patrick's escape from his captors, he would return to Ireland and try to convert his former master to no avail. In the centuries following Milky, the Dalboyne divided into five steps, of which only three extant surnames are known. The McLaurinans, Coulters and McSherrys could be the living descendants of the captors of St. Patrick, if the Ulster theory is to be believed. It is also suggested that Slave Mish in County Kerry is the place where he spent six years as a slave to the heathen Milky. The Eboyne, a Kerry sept whose territory seemed to have adjoined the Anocta of Loch Lane. There is evidence that a region somewhere in the neighbourhood of Slieve Mish, County Kerry, bore the name Ma'ulid. The tribe who ruled the Dingle Peninsula were the Corsa Divina, said to be of the same line of the Dalriata, as both would claim to be from the seed of Conry. A descendant of Conry would take the name Eboyne and settle in Munster. The name would eventually be anglicised to Bowen or Bone. Another group surrounding the area would be the Kerry Lucre, claiming descent from Fergus, King of Ulster. They would give their name to the County Kerry. Although this link provided no clans with links to the Eboyne, they may have just been lost to time. But as you can see, both locations share the same dynasties, location names and mythology. And it's just a bit of fun. Whether the Coulters, McLaurinans, McSherrys or Bowens are the direct descendants of Milku, St. Patrick's master, or if the story is a complete fabrication, just have a good St. Paddy's Day. And as always, please like and subscribe. Thank you.